Welcome back, everybody, to the Poor Boys Podcast with Pigskin and Lone Star. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Poor Boys Podcast. I am Pigskin, and to my left, as always, is my brother from another mother. What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day out there in podcast land. Yes, yes. Well, cheers, everybody. Uh, so this is our third episode of our season. Uh, we are going to be... Last week, well, we had talked about the uh, we picked 10 states, and we did the 10 weird laws in the state. Um, so we uh, have a different one this week. We're going to be covering the ten most remote restaurants in the world. Um, <laughs> so some of these are going to be fun to say. So you may get a kick out of some of these. Uh, if we happen to mess up, please either let us know or don't. We, we don't really care. We tried. We tried. <laughs> we tried using the Google Translation app on a few of them to make sure we pronounced them properly. But we're probably still going to murder them. So. Uh, we apologize in advance to anybody that lives, works, or anything or near these restaurants. We apologize in advance. Um, but uh, we are going to do our damnedest. Yeah. But as always, uh, get this shit up right, bro. Hey, let's let, 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 crack let's it. Let's crack it. Do it. Ooh. I think they spray more on their clothes. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> well, um, we can. We can. <laughs> well, let's get cracking. Let's do this, brother. Cheers, everybody. Let's do this. So if you guys don't know what we're doing, we are using a device called the Kraken 2.0 for Wild Man Drinking. Um, it is a shotgunning tool that allows you to shotgun beers or non-alcoholic beverages of your choice. Um, if you go to their website, wildmandrinking.com, and use the promo code the Four Boys T H E P O U R B O Y Z, you will save five dollars off every order over ten dollar. Dollar make a holla. Go ahead and wind this music out of there. All right, there we go. All right, guys. So again, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Lone Star is going to take it away here in a minute with the uh, uh, with the top ten most re- most resort restaurants in the world. Um, first off, real quick, uh, a couple shout outs. Um, Billy over at Print Busters, um, check him out. He does three D art, um, hand paints all of his um, everything he prints. He hand paints. You can find man, that they're cracking, cracking, that burps, cracking is man. coming up on me, bro. Um, you can find his works on Etsy. Um, you can, I believe, you can also order things from him as far as custom works or um, items that he has up there that he will prefab and make for you. But they are hand painted; they're freaking amazing. Check out Prime Busters over on Etsy. Um, and last but not least, of course, last but not least, we want to give a big shout out to uh, uh, Greg and Mike um, over at uh, Stuck in the Middle uh, presents Talking Smack with Greg and Mike. They are on Spotify. Um, and, uh, you can find that guy named Mike on TikTok. Um, really good dudes. Uh, we had them up on our panel. Um, so they're really good dudes. We both met them both. Uh, we really enjoy doing what we're doing. And, uh, there's a little, there's a little feud, little feud well, going on that, uh, Mr. Greg has decided to start. I'll let you explain yeah, that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> speaking of talking smack with Mike and Greg, uh, if y'all listened to their last podcast last week, there's a little bit of shade throwing at my Cowboys. Um, and, you know, I think uh, in podcast spirit, what, what, what other way to show, throw a little shade right back at his 49ers because he is a 49ers fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. If you notice this year in the in playoffs, the 49ers did defeat my Cowboys and knocked them out of the playoffs. So there's where uh, shot number one was fired. So uh, this is going back at you, Mr. Greg. I hope you enjoy this. But uh, – yeah, I got I got a little joke for you since you had a nice little joke for me. What do you call fifty three millionaires watching the Super Bowl? Yeah, the Niners. 
The 40 freaking Niners. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you're right there with us, uh, Greg. Your boys are fishing just like my Cowboys. They're out fishing. Yeah. So. A lot of them weren't even just said they weren't even going to watch the game. I were talking to a couple of uh, other players from other teams, and they're like, "You're not even going to watch the game." And like, "No, I'm going to be on a plane at that point in time. Like, I'm not even bothering to watch the game." Nothing. So it's it's pretty crazy to hear what's kind of been said around the league about watching the Super Bowl from from players and stuff like that. So yeah. All so, right. So let's let's dive into this, man. man let's let's, uh, let's definitely get into this. So again, the <laughs> we're going to go from number ten to number one. Um, oh. You know, I am a straight white dude from texas so i i i do i do not have fluency in any of these uh languages so again if we make a mistake on the pronunciation there's no disrespect but we'll go from there uh so number 10 the most remote most remote restaurants in the world starting off number 10 we have mount hushan tea house in china um a little bit about a little bit about this and then i'll let excuse me uh pigskin elaborate a little bit so our next restaurant, situated high up on a rock, is not far or is not for the faint of heart. Sitting on top of Mount Hushan in China is a tea house that can only be accessed by climbing the side of a mountain. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, like it says right there, you said it says you could literally fall to your death to get a cup of tea. That um, that is crazy. I guess the climb. How far is the climb? It says if you're not afraid of heights, you might not want to climb this seven thousand feet above sea level specifically you are if you are a coffee person in order to try some of the world renowned tea you have to ascend the heavenly stairs that are carved into the side of a steep mountain with no guardrail to keep you from falling to your death don't worry though you can rent a harness so, <laughs> it's it's so dangerous to get to this restaurant that you can actually rent a harness to harness yourself onto as you're walking up to this yes. restaurant and we do have a picture of it here. And I'm telling you what, on the left and on the right side of this walkway is just sheer drop offs. I mean, you go that way, you're going off the side of the mountain. You go that way, you're yeah. rolling through the woods, and that's going to hurt. If you're going left or right, I mean, it is a steep, steep side of the mountain. I'll I mean, tell you what, it, it looks really mountain. cool, though, kind of like the way it's placed in the top of the mountain. It's kind of like carved in almost to the top of the mountain tops. And it's got that traditional uh, um, Chinese design as far as the building goes. And it's really cool looking, don't get me wrong, but I don't. I, I don't know if tea is worth it for me to climb 7,000 feet. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't drink coffee or tea, so you know yeah. what? I don't know if I'd climb 7,000 feet, but again, I bet the view from the side of that mountain is absolutely freaking stunning. But do I want to risk my life to see? I mean, granted, I mean, people climb ever, so. But yeah, yeah. This, this restaurant looks absolutely gorgeous. It I wonder. Absolutely beautiful. I wonder if like kind of up here, you see how it looks like it's like glass windows maybe? Mm -hmm. like, I wonder, I tell you what, I guarantee you inside there, there's some, some seating that you can like cool. overlook the views you're going to get from that restaurant look absolutely absolutely amazing so if you love tea and you happen to be in china go check it out and if you want to climb seven times a feet go for it <clears throat> yeah i'm gonna pass on that <laughs> <laughs> so the next number nine most remote restaurant in the world and again pigskin has not seen any of these neither have i so we're kind of getting a like a first take of, of all of these, but number nine, the most remote restaurants in the world is the Rock Restaurant in Zanzibar. Um, a little bit about this. It says, do you smell what the rock is cooking? Well, no, not yet. Situated off the shores of Macau and I, Pingui, see again, hope yeah. I said the right, beach in Zanzibar, Tanzania, lies a restaurant that is impossible to miss. It is built on a rock in the middle of the ocean. Dude. So that thing, wow. looks, that thing looks like something out of a fairy tale book, bro. Like, it does. Like that literally looks like a, oh my God, that's so cool. So again, we do see pictures of these and it, it's like this restaurant just sits in the middle of the water and it's like picturesque. What does it say? It said, and then the clear water surrounding the rock restaurant in Zen's bar invites you to have a dip after enjoying your meal. Just keep in mind that this restaurant has a fan has a fantastic and extremely unique location, but it's not a gourmet restaurant. So set your expectations reasonably. So pretty much they say, you're not gonna eat great food, but you're gonna get great views sitting in this, in the middle of the ocean. <clears throat> yeah, it's not a five-star restaurant is basically what they're saying, but I'll yeah. tell you what, just looking at it, it looks like, almost honestly, in this picture, this almost looks like the sky down here. And this looks like a tree, like a fucking tree house sitting at the top of a tree. Yes. It, it looks and it looks like the only way you can get there is either swimming there or by boat. 
like a little small boat. But yeah, I mean, it, it is. Literally... I don't know what that is. Is that the beach? Oh, that might be the beach. So you could probably walk out there. Okay, yeah, because I'm guessing. Okay, okay. I'm guessing because I can see a little bit of like what could be maybe sand underneath the water because it's a little bit darker. Yeah. So it may be just like a walk up. So I'm guessing okay. it's probably not that deep, but still, I mean, you're eating probably a couple, a couple hundred yards off the off the actual coast coast. So that, that actually does look awesome. pretty. That it does look pretty cool. And wow. again, I'm not going for the food, obviously. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> So that is number nine most remote um, restaurant in the world. And number eight restaurant or most remote restaurant in the world is Tempu Restaurant in Peru. So a little bit about this is forget what forget about working hard for a meal. Try walking hard for a meal. The primary way of accessing Tempu Restaurant in Machu Peru Pichu. or Machu Picchu is by hiking. Yeah. Sure, sure. You can take the easy way out and hop on a bus, but what fun is that? After all, you need to work up your appetite. Wow. So where does it? What does it say? Where is it at? It says so. It's Belmayan Sanctuary Lodge. Belmayan Sanctuary Lodge. It's on top of the Andes Mountain. No wonder you got to hike. Holy you got to go up. Yeah, it's it sits on top of the Andes Mountains. You got to hike up the Andes Mountains just to get to this restaurant. I guess it says you can take a bus, but so I guess you can if you don't want to walk it. I guess you could just catch a bus up there, but it doesn't actually show a picture of the restaurant. It shows a picture of a really like it looks like a salmon like dish salmon or with some asparagus. asparagus and maybe some chickpeas or something underneath it yep. with some sprouts on top. The food looks amazing. That looks Ooh, more like a five star really dining opposed yes. to the last one, where it's just hey, the views. This one is actually the dining itself, but I'm sure since it is on top of the Andes Mountains, you're still going to get some views that you wouldn't normally from not the top. But yeah, yeah if you want to take the easy way out, you can take a bus or you can go hiking and bring your boots. And it looks out. like you can go eat there or you can stay at the resort, either one. So you can just you don't have to be to stay at the lodge to eat there. You can go in there just for the restaurant or you can stay at the lodge and enjoy your meals in the restaurant. So I guess they guess you can sleep there the whole lodge. That's pretty cool. And I've always wanted to go to Peru, so I'm not to remember that. That's time. pretty awesome. Yeah, the, I guess I'm never in Peru. Food looks and it's like there's caviar on the side. Oh yes, it does look like caviar. Either oh caviar goodness. on top of the salmon. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd eat that there. Is delicious. All right, that is covering number eight. Now the mo n number seven again. This is going to be a tough one to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Y'all have fun at the pronunciation ex expense of mine. Uh, so number seven, most remote restaurant in the world. We have Refugee, Refugee de Plain de Aguile in Char, Char, Charmonet, right? Charmonet, Charmonet, France. Yeah, Charmonet, France. Oh, that's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. Jeez, but you got, and there's right. more down there. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit about this restaurant. Again, this is in France. This is one of the coolest remote restaurants I've been to was hanging off the side of a mountain towering over Chamon, a Chamon, a Chamon, Germany, a Germany, France. To get to the refugee, you must take the cable car to Aguile du Mindy to the midpoint, then walk about 15 minutes down the side of the mountain to the restaurant. Okay, I, I find you a GPS. I mean, <laughs> you have to 15 minutes down the mountain. So, like, you have to go up, up to the, the midpoint and then walk back down, down the mountain just to get to the restaurant. Good Lord, talk about working oh. up an appetite. Holy it doesn't shit. seem like you can get there by vehicle either. It seems like you have to walk. It says then you have to walk about 15 minutes. He said, um, I can't believe, I can't begin to describe how delicious the tarfalete or tarfalete, or tarfalete was at this restaurant. It's a rustic cabin, so don't expect fine dining, but you can obviously expect to have some of the best French mountain food you've ever tasted. On the outside, it looks pretty like cutesy. It, it's pretty cool. It's got cool little tables out front. And it's got nice little bright red doors. Uh, you know, yeah. got flowers everywhere. It's very, you know, very bright with all the with all the flowers here on the on the screen. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But I mean, he's, just imagine you get to hike or go up ha halfway up the mountain and then walk 15 minutes. So then, whenever you leave, you have to walk back up to the midpoint to get back down. I think so. I mean, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like you have to go up part of the mountain and then go back down. So. Jeez. I mean, so yeah, I guess if you wanted to leave, you'd have to go walk back the 15 minutes and then catch a cable car because it list says there's a cable car that takes you up there and then to the midpoint and then you have to walk down. So I guess, yeah, yeah the cable car walk, probably takes you. Yeah, you'd have to walk, walk back, back to the up. cable car basically to get back all the way down the mountain. That's Good that's pretty Lord. crazy. Man. That is definitely remote right there. It's like cool. to take two steps forward and two steps back and down the road 
15 yeah. miles. I'm yeah. Like, Jeez, what the heck? All right, so that is number seven on the top ten. And coming in at number six, the most remote restaurant in the world, we have Cooks, the the the, the Faroe Islands. Uh, just this picture that is oh, just is absolutely beautiful. It's it is like plateaus with lush green grass, just like you kind of kind of see in like Scotland that that rustic green grass. Um, but a little bit about this is listed as one of Times Great Places in 2018. Um, Cooks is the first restaurant in the in the the Faroe Islands to be awarded a Michelin star. It's been it's been called the world's most remote foodie destination. Yeah. So that okay, that's I see why that made the list now. Right. Uh, so the New Yorker article said of the restaurant, people are flocking to this Nordic Arpico. Who? Arpelago. There you go. Arpelago. <laughs> there you go. Uh, to sample, yeah, what he said. Uh, to, to <laughs> yeah. sample this cuisine, like fermented lamb tallow, yeah. that changes even the most adventurous palate. Um, the best restaurant in the Nordic are. are Archipelago. See, I'm going to have you say that every time now. <laughs> Cook specializes in local Faroese dishes and has a 17 course tasting menu you must try, featuring foods that are raised or cultivated on the Faroes or founded or found in the local waters. So it sounds like everything's fresh. Yes, it everything is. is right there on the island or they pull it out of the ocean. And wow. I mean, and, and like I said, th th this picture is absolutely picturesque. I would love to just sit on the side of this rock, but. Uh, the waters are blue as can be. You got waterfalls. Looks like the grass is growing right on top of the rocks, dude. Yeah, it looks That's like crazy. it's like it's like bright green mossy grass rock. I mean, on, on the side of the rock, it's just absolutely beautiful. But it seems like everything, like Pigskin said, everything seems to be one hundred percent fresh, either from the island or from the waters below it. So, yeah. So okay. So there you go. It says a reservation is required to get to this restaurant, as the restaurant can only serve twenty four dinners. Per, or diners per night, um, and be prepared to pay a pricey sum for the. Oh, I bet you it's expensive, bro. But again, they can only serve twenty four dinners a night, like that. Just like diners, so twenty four people. They can only serve twenty four people a night. So I mean, they're they, they have like a wow. like, like a base. You know, I wonder how far their reservations are out too. You know, I mean, they probably have reservations for quite a while. For hmm. something like that. Well, there's probably like a year waiting so, list, or I mean, granted, I mean, it depends on how often people get there, but still, I mean, well, especially for all the rich people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, this thing has been listed for the Michelin star, uh, New York Times. I mean, this That's thing crazy. is, is I mean, it is picturesque. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, wow. That is, uh, that's yeah, number that's six. Cool. All right. Moving up the list at the halfway point, uh, the top or the most uh, remote restaurants in the world at number five. <laughs> this will be a good one as well. Uh, La Mista del Almazana, Argentina. Uh so a little bit about this particular restaurant. This is on the island of Tierra de Fuego in Argentina. You'll find La, La, La Mesita de la Manza. Um, you can expect a hearty seafood selection of mussels, king crab, trout, uh, sourced locally, of course. Um, it's quite an experience eating in a tiny fishing village facing the Beagle Channel and with the cook making simple, honest food right behind you. Oh, damn. It's like an open kitchen concept kind of sort of deal. Yeah, so you can pretty much see the Dude, and that's the all seafood, bro. Like that plate that we're looking at right now, it's all, I see shrimp, I see mussels, I see octopus, I see uh, scallops. Oh, my goodness. Freaking uh, oysters. I mean, it is a, it is a seafood that drink. It's like a seafood platter right there for <laughs> sure. I mean, and, and I hear Argentina is absolutely beautiful, um, and they're big on seafood. So that's, a, that's one place that I would definitely visit. Absolutely. So, uh, Monza is a is a very quiet fishing tiny village, and the way to Al Al Al, Al Manzana or Al Manzana, yeah, is by car is very scenic. However, the easiest way to get to the land of fire is by helicopter. The restaurant is very small, so you need to make a reservation. So another one you need a reservation for. Okay. So it's a very small little area, and they said you can get there by helicopter. Imagine saying, "Hey, babe, let's go out on a date," and then like you freaking rent a helicopter and have it drop you down right at the restaurant. Yeah, and they didn't even say that you have to. They said the easiest way to get there. So they're already telling you, "Look, the easiest way to get there is by getting on a helicopter." Like that's crazy. 
<clears throat> but you can get there by car. They say it's very scenic, but the easiest way to get there by helicopter. Let me shut. Let me shell out my wallet and my million yeah. dollars just to get to this restaurant. Right. <laughs> right. So that'd be pretty interesting. Like I said I have always wanted to go to Argentina, so yeah, for that would be fun. All right, moving on to number four most um, remote restaurants in the world. We have Mamo in Oslo, Norway. Uh, a little bit about this one in the capital of Norway, Oslo, is where you'll find one of the restaurants with the world's best list called Miamo. Miamo is Norse for Mother Earth, and it is the first restaurant in Norway to be awarded three Michelin stars. So the last one was rewarded one. This is three Michelin stars. So obviously this has got a little bit more to it, I would guess soon. Uh, you, you have to book your spot nine days in advance as the restaurant only – has eight tables in the main dining area. Uh, what makes this so? What makes it so unique is the focus of the complete experience. It's an exciting journey to the journey of the Norwegian cruise, and it's the world's northernmost three-star Michelin restaurant. So it's the world's most northernmost. And restaurant. you have to book your spot ninety days in advance. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's what I was asking about the other one. Like, it's got to be booked out pretty far, too. They only have that many tables. And that just looks like a bowl of flowers. That does look like a bowl of flowers that they picked out of the off, off your grandma's tree or something. Or yeah, I mean, they could be bush. edible flowers. I mean, they are edible flowers, but I, that doesn't look, I don't know what that picture is there for. I mean, that does not look appetizing if I'm yeah. eating a bowl of flowers. I mean, you if got I, a burger yeah, or something? If I'm stooping to eating a bowl of, of flowers, somebody <laughs> needs to smack me, man. Like, <laughs> that's just not okay. And they're not even like, yeah, they're pretty flowers for sure, but I ain't eating that shit. No, man. That, that does, nothing about that seems appetizing. Sorry. Uh, no, I want no, I want pizza. I want burgers and french fries. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know about flowers. So that is number four in Oslo, Norway. And coming up on number three, so the top three most remote restaurants in the world. Number three is the Farnox Lodge in New Zealand. Uh, a little bit about this continuing in the island theme is the beauty tucked in Marlboro sounds, which is at the Northern tip of South Island in New Zealand. It's for no, for, oh, for now. Sorry. Sorry. For no, for no, for no, for no, for no, the for no lodge and it's award winning restaurant is surrounded by force and is only accessible, only accessible by helicopter or boat. So I see a theme there. Uh, they have a talented team of local and international chefs that will wow you with every bite. So not only is it remote, but it also sounds like it's going to be, you're going to get some good food. Like it's going to be, you know, you know, four or five star quality, especially if they've got international chefs that they're bringing in specifically to cook for you. And it, yeah, I mean, the, I bet the food is impeccable. Like I said, for New Zealand, it's very hard to get into that area. Um, and I'm sure there's, Fancy five stars all over that place, but the picture shows oh, yeah. a coastline, just where these this restaurant is, and it it does sit near a, a beach yeah, area. That's the, that's the whole lodge right up there. Yep, that's crazy. So it sits right on the water. It says only accessible by helicopter and boat. Okay, all right, so all right, you, all right. you have to get there either by a, a boat or you're getting helicopter dropped into a rest or into a lodge. But looks absolutely so a little, little bit more. Um, the lodge is a great backdrop of lush green forests and sprawling lawns that, but right up to the stunning, their stunning green blue water. The dining experience isn't something so unusual. The loca the location absolutely is. If you're looking for a fantastic place to escape, this is it. I mean, yeah, just looking at that picture, dude. I mean, just look at the color of that water, like crystal clear and. I mean, you could just, I mean, it's like light blue, and then it goes into the dark blue and the teal colors, and oh my goodness, it just looks gorgeous. Absolutely, yeah. New Zealand is definitely that's a place I want to visit. Okay. So it's a nice little lodge restaurant with their national chefs and uh, local chefs. So that I'm sure that menu is pretty expansive because you're going to have, you know, different different palettes that say, hey, you know, I can do this internationally. It is more of an international dish, and then you get the, you know. The yeah, so it's dishes. not yeah, so you get local and you get so you so you're not just getting one type of food. You're, you'll be able to get different types of foods from good places, you know, good from places around the world because they're bringing in these, you know, these chefs that that's what they do is work in other parts of the country and make those cuisines for that specific country. So. Yep. So pretty interesting there in New Zealand. All right, moving on up the list. We got two to go. So number two, most remote restaurant in the world. I think gosh, this is an easy one to say. 
the three chimneys restaurant in Scotland. Uh, so from the su fr fr from the southern part of the world uh, to the north, we find ourselves in the Isle of Skye. Uh, this remote island in northwest Scotland is home to a world-renowned restaurant and inn called the Three Chimneys Restaurant, which is one of Scotland's most iconic restaurants set in a stunning location on the shore of Loch Dunvegan in the northwest corner of the Isle of Skye. So this is the most northwest part of Scotland. Pretty cool picture. It's a cool little, I mean, it doesn't really look like a whole lot, you know what I mean? You really, you really wouldn't be able to tell what it was from the outside. There's no signs on the outside. There's no nothing saying what it is or where it's at. Um, and I only see two chimneys. Yeah, I only see two chimneys and the fact that it's three chimneys. Yeah. Maybe maybe that maybe it's over here. Maybe it's further that way. Who okay. knows? Who knows? But yeah, it looks like just like a normal white cottage house. Like I said, there's no restaurant signs. I mean, there's a couple of picnic tables out front, but other than that, there's no signs or anything on the building itself. So So you'd have to know this was there to you I mean you're not just gonna drive by and be like, Oh, there's a restaurant. You know, you're gonna drive by and see a house looking building, you're not gonna know what it is unless you know what it is. Exactly. And it's just a little bit more of this. It, it, I mean, this requires a long drive from Glasgow to get there, and you'll feel like you've reached the edge of the world, but it's well worth it for the warm, welcome, and delicious food you'll receive. The good news about this remote restaurant is you can spend a night in the house over, over by uh, over Bay, which is right next door to the restaurant. So you, you can definitely get there um, on nice. the drive, but you can also stay there as well. So they have little cabbages or cabins, cat cottages. Cottages, cabins. You just combine them into one. It's okay. We're, <laughs> yeah, I, we're I, just I, making our I, own I, words I, I, over here. I just here. made a word. Yeah, I you know, just, add, add it to Uber Dictionary. We're just adding it to Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, that's why that's why we are spontaneity. Uh, we are definitely very spont spontaneous. So I just made up. We just made up a word. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, have you always wanted to go to Scotland or have any? Scotland's definitely one of the things on my bucket list. I'm a huge golfer, and so Scotland's got some of the best golf courses in the fucking world, and they're some of the hardest golf courses in the world. Uh, I would really love to go to Scotland and go golfing and shit. If I'm close enough to Glasgow to actually get there, I'd love to actually go check this restaurant out. It's pretty uh, cool. It yeah. doesn't really talk about, like, the type of food or really, like, what kind of food it is, if it's high quality low quality mid mid, mid quality but um it's probably you know it looks really nice it's really cool so and it's on the northwest side of scotland so yep. if you're in scotland look on the northwest side on a remote the island the three chimneys restaurant so all right so we've covered the top nine most remote restaurants in the world and we have made our way to number one this one actually does look pretty cool and it's something that i would definitely love to do um, it's an underwater restaurant in the Maldives. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you like underwater stuff, but that is definitely it's just a picture of cool. was like, like you're eating and you're literally in under the ocean, literally, and there's fish swimming around you. And that's pretty sweet, dude. That'd definitely be something I'd be interested in for sure. So a little bit about this number one most remote restaurant in the world. So known for its splendid white sand beaches, the Maldives is also home to a couple of restaurants that are out of this world, though technically speaking, they are sort of under this world. Um, Itcha, it, it, Itha. Itha is an underwater restaurant sitting 16 feet beneath the sea level at Rangali Island at the Conrad Maldives Resort. Um, Sub Six is a competing undersea restaurant located um, in the Niyama Private Island Resort in the Maldives, which is 20 feet beneath the sea. So, th so this restaurant is 16. The other one is 20 feet beneath the sea and can, and can accommodate more people. It also doubles as a nightclub. Ooh, that would be, be cool. fucking cool. Underwater nightclub? Yeah. That would be cool. Uh, and the last little bit about this is making your way to the Maldives is challenging enough, but getting to either one of these restaurants is a, future, is a further hassle requiring either a seaplane or a boat to get there. But I can guarantee you it will be worth it uh, for this once in a lifetime experience. That's pretty cool. I like so there are basically two of them that are competing against each other. One's bigger and deeper. That's a pretty cool picture though, man. Like I said, I could imagine sitting right there eating dinner and watching the fish around you. I mean, who knows what you're gonna see? Sharks and stingrays and all sorts of crap in that ocean. 
you never know. Yeah, like I said, you know, the other one doubles at the nightclub. So imagine just being a nightclub, you know, under the sea. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Boots uh, but oh, some of the plateware like on this picture, it, it, it looks very like like sea urchins. It, I mean, not sea urchins, but like seashells. They're kind of broken type plates. I mean, there's they're soft edges and everything like that, but they just kind of like seashells. Cool. Yeah, they're very, very uniquely designed plates and utensils and everything that they use at this restaurant. It looks like it's got a personal light for every table. So that's pretty cool, man. I definitely, definitely check that out for sure in a heartbeat. Man, if I'm ever in the Maldives, that is Definitely one place I'm gonna go because I yeah. love fish. Uh, yeah, that would just be a hell of an experience. I would definitely get, be interested in that one. Hell yeah, dude, for sure. So that wraps up our top ten most remote uh, restaurants in the world. That's pretty cool, man. Like I said, there's a lot of those that are. Like I said, they're out there. You've got to kind of get to them and do what you got to do. I don't almost helicopters, I'd... boats, and all kinds of stuff. Right. To well, I mean, we look at some of these restaurants like they're exotic and like they're, I mean, but think about what the people that live there think about, you know, that's just mm -hmm. something they see every day. True. So, you know, the different per perspective on things can actually change the way that you kind of view it. And again, like you said, some of these remote restaurants that are really cool, they don't have the best food. You know what I mean? They're not yeah. a five-star restaurant. It's, it's just, just the view that you It's probably just from. like a mom and pop restaurant that somebody happened to build on a rock and it's like one on the rock the you know, just built it on a rock instead of it. You know, more of a, a tourist guy draw in than the food itself would be. And then you got the the one in freaking China where you're walking up the side of a of a mountain, seven thousand feet. You know, if you go get a cup of coffee or a tea, you're pretty much risking your life. So, you know, some of these are beautiful with great food. Some of these are just terrifying for a freaking drink. So, yeah, pretty yeah. much, dude. It's pretty, pretty much, pretty bro. interesting list. Yeah, definitely interesting list. Oh my goodness. All right. So I think that'll about wrap this one up. Um, we are going to be doing um, another uh, podcast here coming up. Our next podcast season, season one, uh, episode four uh, will be a uh, Super Bowl reaction. Um, we are going to go over our reactions, talk a little bit about the Super Bowl. Uh, so this will actually be the first official sports stream in our actual season. Um, we have a couple that we did that are bonus episodes for you guys to check out. Um, but this will actually be our first uh, episode during a season that we'll cover um, a sporting event. Uh, we just want to talk a little bit about kind of what happened and yeah. kind of reactions from around the league, reactions from Eagles fans, reaction from Cal from Chiefs fans, um, and just kind of see what everybody thinks about the game and what happened. So that'll definitely be our next. Uh, our next I know podcast. there's a lot of hot topics there. Yeah, there is. There's, there's a, a lot, lot of, of topics. controversial <laughs> topics and a lot of things that happen that people aren't very happy with. And uh, so we'll be covering all of that on our next podcast. Um, hopefully we'll get that out on another fucking another couple of days or so. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys again uh, for watching. Appreciate it. And um, yeah, as always, guys, uh, for the sake of Weird Al Yankovic, stay weird, everybody. Hey, stay weird, y'all. Thanks for listening and tune in next time.